our cars come from an era when in the UK it was still reasonably um, unusual to have an automatic. Automatics were very much to preserve of larger expensive cars like the Jag um, but to have one on a smaller car a more everyday car was quite a novelty certainly not rare but it was a novelty I know that provides an element of confusion particularly to people in North America who are very used to automatic being the standard fitment on most vehicles and as they would call it a floor mount or a stick shift being quite the rarity um, but there is reason behind that and this gearbox is kind of a bit of a milestone in terms of addressing that so in the UK just as our example um, we would typically have much smaller engine vehicles than in the States the cost of fuel is very high our roads look at look around you um, yes we have motorways dual carriageways all, all the big stuff but we have an awful lot more of black narrow and twisty like this and a smaller engine vehicle with a manual gearbox is inherently more economical it's lighter it's cheaper to build if you put a automatic gearbox of the older generation onto a smaller vehicle you're normally looking at a fully torque converter style gearbox or a slush box as we used to call them in the UK where if you're unfamiliar with automatics and you're more a manual person it would give you the impression of a constantly slipping clutch engine revs as you hit the accelerator might go up quicker than the car speeds up and that that slipping action which is characteristic of a, of a torque converter would give you lower fuel efficiency and lower levels of performance plus it's incredibly heavy and very expensive then on top of that in Europe and again I'm speaking mainly for the UK here we all grew up with manuals. Uh, we have a driving test standard, which means basically um, you you tend to learn to drive in a manual. It's an option to drive an automatic and get for your test, but you're given a special restricted license, which then prevents you from driving at a manual car, which is far more common in the UK and therefore can be quite restricted. So. We come from that background. This gearbox fitted to the XK8 addresses quite a few issues. It's a mighty gearbox, it's much heavier than a manual gearbox, but it's not the game-changingly heavy of some of its predecessors. Plus, it incorporates a torque converter lock-up system. So when the car is when the car is in the higher gears and road speeds and driving style dictate it's appropriate the torque converter mechanically locks onto the drive shaft and therefore we eliminate that slushy effect and I've done several videos including one quite recently on fuel consumption showing that despite this being a 4 litre bruiser it's capable of very respectable fuel consumption up and around the 30 miles per gallon mark and that's in no small part due to the excellent gearboxes fitted So this transmission lockup is achieved through um, a, a great combination of clutches and brakes within the gearbox which are electro-hydraulically operated. 
and that's all controlled by the transmission computer uh, or TCM transmission control module and with this box it very elegantly mixes and matches the benefits of the full-on torque converter gearbox with a locked out gearbox such as you might get in a Ferrari let's say um, so what really happens is as we set off and I put this into drive the car will start moving very slowly when I take my foot off the brake and that's because it's a torque converter basically it's constantly trying to pull the car forward but slipping it's oil in a in a fan but it's trying to move another fan and basically you can hold it back you can stand in front of the car when it's idling and hold the car back as the revs rise so you get more and more um, grip or drive achieved by this oil filled transmission system and it propels you forward now when we set off in D in the Jag the first second and third gears all have a um, varying degree of this torque converter slip first gear has lots second gear has slightly less third gear has less still and when you get to fourth and fifth then as soon as the engine speed matches transmission speed the gearbox locks those gears to be a direct drive so that's how we're getting a mixture of this smooth refined luxurious drive that you get from a torque converter gearbox with almost seamless shifts with the fuel consumption and high speed performance so that's in gear acceleration from let's say 55 to 90 should you be allowed to when you're using fourth and fifth gears if it was a purely slush box if it was a torque converter that slipped it'd be like a slipping clutch and you would lose performance in that rate in that range this gearbox doesn't do that because fourth and fifth it will have locked the transmission to direct drive and if the engine in increases in revs so do your rear wheels <clears throat> I've always said that the XKA is the perfect car for me because I enjoy finding out secrets and quirks of vehicles and uh, the more you learn about the XKA the more impressed you are by it rather than somebody showing you the magic trick and all of a sudden you're not impressed by it anymore so uh, let's let's have a look at some of the other features that make this so so clever everything I've just told you about the varying degree of uh, torque converter slip is quite impressive more impressive is when we and I'm going to use the word activate sport mode so I've pressed the sport button on the dashboard I've pressed that and let's say I now drive the car very vigorously I'm being very careful my words at this point under the right conditions the gearbox will see that button and the vigorous driving and allow it to lock up in second and third as well only giving that torque converter effect in first gear and then only a limited amount so depending on the style of driving and what you've done with this button that torque converter and locked up transmission mix is changed entirely let's come back to this button again the sport button that's what its uh, actual designation is S for speed or S for smile or S for sport and um, when it's in the up position little red light illuminates and what that is doing is it's running a different program inside the gearbox or at least a different range of programs than would normally be the case with this button lifted 
revs at which the gearbox changes to the next gear up are increased and it adds on about a thousand rpm so it's significantly more revy at that point but this has more tricks up its sleeve it's not just going to hold the gears a little longer i use the expression activate sport mode this is a two-step process turning this on arms sport mode driving in a particular manner with that on activates sport mode and this is a little known fact this is a, a genuine secret of the xk8 if you like so sport mode is activated only when the car has detected either kick down or cornering force has increased above a particular threshold and there isn't an accelerometer there isn't a pendulum in this car to detect g-force how it does that is through a little algorithm it looks at speed and it looks at the difference in the road speed between the front two wheels i.e if you're doing a right hand bend then the left wheel will have to go faster to keep up because it's going further around the bend and when it detects a significant difference between those two wheels which is basically corner and angle exacerbated by speed it knows that you are pressing on around the twisties and that will activate sports mode as well even if kick down is not being activated so lift lifting this bonk, and then floor in the throttle will give us sport mode Pop in this and then throwing it around a few bends will also activate sport mode and in full sport mode we'll have a red line of 6800 which is mightily impressive for a 4 litre V8 engine and the engine won't allow itself to rev beyond that so it will change up if you have a cat's suspended car then this will also force some changes in the damping settings and because transmission lockup will be achieved in all but first gear what it also means is that the changes will be a lot more violent by Jaguar standards um, more direct and give you that more performance because there is no slippage if it in second gear then engine speed rises wheel speed rises the gear selector cannot be pulled out of p because of the transmission lock so by pressing the brake pedal we can hear a click and that allows me to move the gear stick into the next position some cars this is broken but all of the elements should light up as the gear stick gets to them so the, the R the reverse should have lit up red and it has neutral lights up red and D lights up red and in D as long as I've got the handbrake off as soon as I release the brake the car starts to creep forward 